And welcome to the Desk Lady Ada. Hey everybody, and welcome to a Sunday night Desk Lady Ada. This is the snowed in edition. We've got plenty of hot tea to keep us nice and toasty while we do some engineering. It's been uh, a, a bit of a, a exciting weekend in New York. We had two feet of snow, and uh, after a very mild winter, it's pretty exciting. But uh, I thought we'd get down to doing some fun engineering. We're um, heading towards that, uh, that DMA example for NeoPixels that I talked about. And I thought I'd actually step back and maybe spend today doing a talk a couple minutes about um, how to add more serial SPI and wire interfaces to the Arduino Zero or anything that uses the SAMD21 chips. Um, if you're used to chips like you know the Atmega series, um, like the Atmega 328 or even the 25600 or whatever, uh, 250, Atmega 2560 or any of those other nice AVR chips, especially the 8-bit ones, um, you probably are aware that you have a limited number of serial ports, um, UARTs, SPI ports, or I2C. Sometimes you get like two or three UARTs, but usually you're kind of stuck with like one or two SPIs and they're on fixed pins. And even on the Atmega 328, you do get one of each, but they're like, you really only get one of each. And, you know, using one of them to program the chip with the bootloader means like you don't have the UR available to talk to GPSs or um, cellular modules. It, you know, you can get away with bit banging SPI or bit banging UR, but, you know, it's really annoying to, to do that, especially software serial, you know, you need to have a hardware interrupt so that you receive the bytes. And even then it, it's, it's, very annoying and difficult to keep track of the data coming in, especially if you're doing other time sensitive stuff. Um, so the nice thing about the chips in the Arduino Zero, hold it up, is um, this chip is a, a Cortex M0 Plus and 32-bit processor and it has six SIRCOMs, um, which is a, a really fun way to say serial communication modules in a short manner. And these modules uh, are very flexible and allow you to have, e any one of those six can act as I squared C, SPI, or UART. So you could actually have like six SPI buses or five UARTs and one I squared C or three I squared C and two SPI and one UART. I mean like any mix of them, any of them can act as any of them. And it, it's very powerful and very, very handy, especially when, you know, for example, you're using your SPI to do Wi-Fi, but you want another SPI port to clock uh, some LEDs. And you have one UART that you want to use for debugging and then another one for GPS, another one for cellular. So having multiple ports is really awesome. And so um, I wrote a tutorial about it because I thought a lot of people would be interested in this. It's um, something that drove me crazy on the Atmega 328. So having it on this chip is awesome. So let's uh, check out this tutorial and we'll get some data sheet and we'll just kind of go through it. And maybe we'll do some scope cam and uh, look at some traces. So um, 
not completely done with the tutorial, but you know, what the heck, we'll just, we'll just keep, we'll just go through it. So this is the tutorial that I just uh, made live. Um, it is called using at SAMD 21 CIRCOM for more SPI I2C material ports. So that's great. And here's the chip. I use the QFN. This is a photo from the Feather M0. Uh, we use this chip on our M0 boards and it's also in the Arduino Zero, which is a really awesome board that you should check out. Um, so basically, you know, this is what I just said. If you have an Mega328, you know, you have uh, I squared C and you have SPI and you have UART, but you're stuck. Like you can only have the UART on digital zero and one. The I squared C is only on analog four and five, so you lose two analog pins. And the SPI is only on pins 11, 12, and 13. Um, and and they're, they're fixed. You can't change them. So the SMD21 has a solution for this. You have up to six CIRCOM interfaces, and each one can be a UART. Um, they're called USART, Universal Serial, something, 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 whatever protocol. And then um, I squared C, interchip communication, SPI, serial peripheral interface, probably, I don't know. I am not very good at the um, acronyms. That's, I don't, I know, I know what they are, but I don't remember what they said. And I have actually no idea what a LIN slave is. I mean, it's probably some serial protocol, but I don't know what it is. Um, so, you're, you know, these protocols actually cover a lot. So by, there's also I2S, which is separate, um, has its own uh, interface, but um, what's neat about this is, you know, you can use a UART as MIDI. So like, that's kind of nice. You can have, um, you know, multiple um, ways to use each interface. You can have SPI to talk to an SD card. You can have SPI to talk to a Bluetooth module. You can have SPI to talk to a bunch of LEDs. Okay, so, um, and this is a picture of a zero. And yeah, you, they, they set up, Arena was very smart. They set up the SPI to be on the two by three um, pin header over here. The UR is the hardware serial is still over here. RX is zero and one, and I squared C is still over here. Note that it's no longer analog four and five. You have to you have to get to the um, ever since the R three series of Arduinos, the I squared C pins are over here. So those three are taken, but you still get um, about three circoms to use. It actually, turns out to be two, but um, that's still more than usual. Okay, so. Using the circoms, it's not too hard, but you do need to put a little bit of effort into it. You have to be a little careful because the um, Cortex M0 is one of those chips that is advanced in that you have a lot of possibilities for which pin you get to use for each function. It's called muxing or multiplexing. So let's look up the data sheet. So I'm actually going to, oh, I have the data sheet over here. And let's go to, I think it's page 21. Yeah, 21. Um, and this is IO multiplexing and considerations for your consideration. And this is section six. And so this shows you've got multiple chips in this family. Because this is the data sheet for the entire family. You've got the ATSMDE, ATSMD21G, ATSMD21J. The E has fewer pins. Then the G and the J, the J has 48. I think the J, actually I can look up exactly how many pins. I think the E is 32 pins. Hold on, yeah, the E is the 32 pin, QFP or QFN. The G is 48 pin, QFP or QFN. And the J is 64 pin. So you get to choose how much space and money you're willing to spend. You can get way more pins and you, you, know, you don't get more speed or functionality but you do get a lot more pins, or you can go smaller, um, less space, but again, you don't get as many pins, and, and your muxing is a little more complicated, as we'll see. Okay, so we're using the atsmd 21 g That's the series we're using. And this is the pin number. This is the literal mechanical one, two, three, four, five, all the way around pin number. And each pin has a name. Um, there are two ports, port A and port B. Um, if you're used to AVRs, there's, you know, port A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It goes, goes quite high because each port only has eight I.O. pins on it. Since this is a 32-bit processor, you're going to have 32 pins per port. And so that's why you have, like, PA0, and this goes up to, like, PA25 and PA31. Um, most, you know, it, you get a whole 
strip of 32 bits on one port. Um, there's about the supply, and then there's the external interrupt stuff, and then um, some pins are special. They have I2C capability. We'll chat about that. Some pins can be used as analog digital converters. Um, some can be used as uh, touch controllers. Uh, only one pin, I think, has DAC capability. It's a, this one, PA2. Well, hold on. Let me see if there's any other pins. Nope, that's the only one with DAC. So this is a very special pin, PA2. Congratulations, you're the only one with DAC. And over here, there is um, CIRCOM, ALT, and CIRCOM. And this is, this is how you get to define what pins are which. So you see, like, pretty much every pin has an interrupt that can be attached to it. And most of them have analog digital converters as well on the pins. Those aren't muxed, but you can uh, think, I'm pretty sure you can, yeah, these are, the, this is the um, analog converter and this is the comparator. Um, but for the CIRCOM, there, there is this multiplexing that you can do. So usually you don't have to care about this because for analog input, there's like each, each pin, you, like you can choose whether to have it be an analog input or digital output, or you know, some pins can also be like I squared C or touch. But for the circoms, it's a little bit more complicated. So, um, so we go into the table, and this is that table that we just saw, and here it is with some nice outlines. So these are the pins that have circom capability. So PA00, PA01, port B08. These are connected to circom 1, 1, 1 pad 1, 0 pad 1, 0 pad 2, 0 pad 3. Each circom has four pads cap uh, available. So you have 0 through 5 is the circom number 0, circom 0, circom 1, circom 2, circom 3, circom 4, circom 5. And each one of them has four possible pins that can be used with it, the pads. So that's a total of uh, 24 total pads that you might have to configure. Um, so some only have one CIRCOM capability. So let's go forward to that photo again. So if you see here, um, PA00 can only act as CIRCOM 1 pad 0, but PA08 can be either CIRCOM 00 or CIRCOM 20. And then Port A9 can be CIRCOM 01 or CIRCOM 21. So there, you know, you, sometimes you have a choice about which one. And basically, this just means that when you route your signals, you have a little bit more flexibility about saying, like, well, I want you know, the, these two pins to be I squared C and these two pins to be SPI. You, get, you have more flexibility, so you can, you can decide which pins you want to use. Maybe because some pins have um, analog digital conversion, but, and you want to use that, and so you want to move the um, CIRCOM pads to other ones. OK. So once you know, okay, there's some pins that can be used for, for serial communications and some can't, the thing is you want to convert from that port A01 to the Arduino pin number. And to do that, you want to look in the variance file. And this is a really useful file if you're doing any kind of Arduino internals. Like you want to know what is, you know, what is this digital 13? What is digital 13? Check out the variance file. And I'm looking at the GitHub. And um, this one is really well documented. It's quite nice. For each Arduino pin, like say digital zero, it'll tell you what this can do. And this is actually kind of a, a copy of that MUX table we saw in the data sheet, but done numerically by Arduino. So digital pin zero is also known as port A11. Uh, this one is uh, external interrupt 11. It can also be analog digital converter input number 19. It can also be the, the touch interface, X3. And as you see here, they've copied down. Uh, it can also be a timer, TCC0, T01. Those are timers. But it says here it can be CIRCOM0, pad 3, or CIRCOM2, pad 3. And then digital 1 can be CIRCOM0, pad 2. And these are starred, which basically is telling you this is what the default usage is going to be. The actual definition is down here in this table. but. Um, you know, it says here, Rx on this circom and, and Tx on that circom. So you can, you know, I've copied down this table in here, and basically you can see, like, every port name, PA or PB, and then the number, and then the functionality. So um, 
here is the table pulled out with only the circoms. So here's every pin that's available and use an Arduino, and this is the circom and the circom alt. Um, you know, the first two are used by the crystal, so you can't actually use those. And then some of them are used by the debug interface or by USB, or like these two pins, they're circom 1.2 and 1.3, but they're used for the debug, so those are not actually available. So then we actually have to pair out the ones that are used for USB or the crystal or timing or debugging. And these are the actual pins you have access to, which is, which is less, but it's still quite a bit. So digital 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so 0 through 13, I'll have circoms available. Analog 0 doesn't, but analog 1 through 5 does. And then, of course, the I squared C pins and the SPI pins, because they have circoms already defined for them. So first up, you know, like I said, the only way to create I squared C SPI or serial devices on this chip is to use a CIRCOM. And since the Arduino Zero already has a default SPI, a default wire, a default UART, those three you kind of don't want to touch. You could, if you wanted to, convert the I squared C default CIRCOM into SPI, but we'll leave it for a more advanced time. For, for now, let's, let's uh, let sleeping CIRCOMs lie. And let's check out what's the predefined ones. So um, if you're using an Arduino Zero, there is a debug chip, the little chip that says EDBG, and it's a Simpsys DAP chip, and it, it can be used to upload code from the Arduino IDE to this chip, and that actually uses a CIRCOM. So you lose one if you're using that programming port. Um, and that's CIRCOM 5. So you can tell by looking at the table that CIRCOM 5 is used for eDebug TX and eDebug RX. I'll just um, label that here. So you can tell because there's only two CIRCOMs, there's only two pads that could be used. CIRCOM 2, 5.2 .2 and 5.3, it must be using CIRCOM 5. Okay, so that's not available. And then I squared C uses um, CIRCOM 3.0 and 3.1. So that's also taken. CIRCOM 3, not available. SPI uses CIRCOM 4.0.2 and .3, so that's not available. And then finally, there's the hardware serial interface that can be used to talk to like GPS or, or phone modules or cellular modules or um, Bluetooth or whatever. You don't use it for programming, but it's still on pins D0 and D1. They're kind of taken. And that's um, CIRCOM 0. So, D0 and D1 use CIRCOM 0.3 and 0.2. So that means that you really only have two extra CIRCOMs on the Arduino Zero. Now, it's better than nothing, but it's only two. You get CIRCOM 1 and CIRCOM 2. Those are completely available for whatever you want to use. And if you're using a Feather M0, because we don't have that eDebug chip, you can also use 5. 5 is not being taken because we don't have that debug interface. Whew. Okay. Are there any questions? No. Okay, yeah, this is quite a rant. So, okay, given that you've got now two or three circoms, uh, it's not as much as six, but you remember, you know, you're already using some of them, and you could recycle them, but we're going to use only the free ones for now. Circom one, let's see which pins can be used. So, these are the pins that have circom one dot something available. D10, D11, D12, and D13. These, you know, they're not in order, so D11 is 1.0 and then 13 is 1.1. But basically, these four pins have all four pads of CIRCOM 1 available, so that's cool. And then CIRCOM 2 actually has a lot more options. Remember, because you have flexibility with what pins you want to use, um, there is sometimes a way for you to have one CIRCOM on two or three different sets of pins. So for CIRCOM 2, um, you know, there's more available, but, you know, we don't want to use D0 and D1 because it's already taken for hardware. And then this pin is used for I squared C. So that leaves us these four pins. Um, we have 2.2 .2 on CIRCOM for D2. D3 has it on the alt, the alternative usage. D4 has it also on the alternative usage, and D5 has it on the main usage. So you do still get access to all four pads. 
And then if you're using the zero, uh, sorry, if you're using the feather M0 instead of the Arduino zero, um, there's also a bunch of pins available, but most of these are used, these are already used by I squared C. So you have three pads, which, which actually is a little limiting because you don't have access to CIRCOM 5.1. And um, for example, with I squared C, you actually need to have access to that pad. So CIRCOM 5 can't be used for I squared C. It's a little limiting. Um, and then if you want to, um, free up CIRCOM 5, you can just delete a line from the variance file at the bottom of the variance. Um, it defines uh, the UART serial as a CIRCOM 5 uh, serial port, so you can just delete that line if you wanted to, if you, if you would like. Not suggested, but you can do so. Okay, so now let's actually begin by making a new SPI port. So SPI is a three pin interface. So even though there's four pads available for the CIRCOM, we don't use all four. We're only gonna use three of them. Um, we're gonna set up the SPI to be in master mode. So this would be the zero is controlling some SPI slave device such as a, a Wi-Fi module or um, you know, SD card or um, Boy, I'm just thinking of like SPI devices, some LED drivers or, or SPI. Um, so our Blue Fruit LE is, is SPI as well. And you know, it's, it's, it's very, there's a lot of sensors that you can use SPI with. Um, it's really good for high speed serial transfer. Okay, so the question is, how is SPI made now in the Arduino core? So let's check it out by opening up the SPI.cpp file. If you go all the way to the bottom, actually, if you look through this, you'll see all sorts of mentions of, of CIRCOM and like, ooh, is a CIRCOM pointer to a CIRCOM and, and there's like a CIRCOM RX pad, kind of exciting. So if you look at the bottom, you can see, you know, there is the definition for your first, there is some uh, capability for the variance file to define more SPI ports, but we're gonna do this manually. So down here is where you actually create the SPI device, and it's of class, SPI class, it's a type, and it passes in the address of peripheral SPI, which up here is CIRCOM4. So SPI uses CIRCOM4. And then you pass in the MISO pin, the S clock pin, the MOSI pin, because you have to tell it, you know, which pins are you going to use. And then you kind of pass in this weird thing, pad SPI TX, pad SPI RX, and it's like, just like definition, SPI pad two as clock three, and then CIRCOM RX pad zero. So like, it's getting a little arcane here. Um, and then the, uh, here's, the, here's the macros. So if you look in the variance file, you can see that MISO, MOSI, and S clock are defined as digital two, 22, 23, and 24. The peripheral is, is CIRCOM four. And then yeah, there's this like, what is this SPI pad two as clock th three thing? So what that is, is when you have those pads for the CIRCOM, remember you have four pads available, six CIRCOMs, four pads, and you have some flexibility about which pad get to be which pin. With SPI especially, you get to choose which pin is going to be the MISO pin, which pad is going to be the MOSI pin, and which pad is going to be the S clock pin. So you get some, you get some choices. You can move the pins around a little bit. Um, you don't have ultimate flexibility. You can't assign any pad to any function, but you do have a couple options. So for the, the RX pin, which is the master and slave out, the MISO pin, you can actually choose any pad. You can say pad zero, pad one, pad two, pad three, and then it'll define any of, you know, any of those will be the input. Um, for the transmission, the MOSI pin, and the S clock pin, you, you can be a little flexible and there's like four options. You can have S clock on pin one or pin three, and then you can have um, MOSI on pad zero if S clock is on one, pad two if S clock is on three, pad three if S clock is on one, and pad zero if S clock is on four. So you see you don't have every option, but you do have four. That's better than nothing. 
So, yeah, this is, you kind of get to, you have to decide which pins you want. I mean, like, it's not a big deal. I think, like, you, you do have um, some flexibility, and most of all the pins don't have functionality that's so specific that you absolutely need to, like, keep this one or two pins free. Like, the analog digital converters are so many of them that, and so many interrupts and so many timers, and I don't feel like it's a, it's a big deal. It's a trade-off. You don't have a full crossbar. I think um, Scilabs... I don't remember the name of the Scilab chip, but I think there was a Scilab chip that had a full, like pretty much a full crossbar. Any pin could go to like any function, which is awesome, but um, I don't even remember the name of the chip, so it can't have been that popular. Or maybe I just, uh, it's been a really long time. Okay, so now that you know, okay, you have the circoms, you have the pads, you know how to create a device, let's make a device. So what we're gonna do is we're going to mimic the Atmega 328 SPI pin numbering, because let's say we have some uh, shield and it uses um, the old Arduino SPI pins, 11, 12, and 13 for SPI. So let's make a new SPI device that uses those pins. Well, let's use CIRCOM1. Okay, so looking back at, at we had that table before. Um, CIRCOM1, yep, we have D10, D11, D12, D13. And then we want to use these three pins. We don't want to use D10. We'll use that for the chip select or something. And we want to put the clock signal on D11. So that's CIRCOM 1.1. We want to have MOSI on D11, which is exactly what it would be on an Arduino Uno. So that's 1.0. And D12 on 1.3. So luckily, that actually is a combo that we can use. The, the, you know, the, the clock and MOSI combo does match up with SPI pad 0 S clock one, yay. And um, then of course you can set RX to be any of the pins, so you just pin, pick pin three. And then this means that pad two is, is just not used. Like you, it's free to go. You, even though it's on a CIRCOM, that pin isn't taken. It can be continually used for whatever other need it, you have for it. So um, this is how you will create the SPI class. You make a new SPI class object. We're gonna call it SPI one. It, um, you pass in CIRCOM1, you're going to tell it, use CIRCOM1. You tell it the pins that you're using, and then you tell it what the MUX pads you want to use. Now, you might be thinking, hey, like, shouldn't it be able to figure out what the MUX pads are based on um, the pins? The answer is yes. But, you know, I think that's a lot of code because you have to go through every option and like figure out what the MUX is. And I think they wanted to make sure that when you create a new SPI device, you thought carefully and, and you are doing exactly what you think you're going to do. Okay, so let's, um, this is the code. It's, you know, include SPI because you still need, you need to include that library. And then we pass that in. We'll, we'll start up serial, my SPI begin, and then we'll basically just use it. You begin a transaction at eight me megahertz, MSB first, must be in bit, SPI mode zero, and then we'll just send it incrementing uh, eight bit numbers. So, whoa, don't block. Copy this code. Oh, hold on, I need to open up Arduino. Finally, we're getting to some hardware. Get to scope cam. Not, not quite yet, but in a moment. First I have to get some jumpers so I can, I can be ready. Okay, so we have a new sketch. Let's paste in that code. We're rocking. This is like the best thing ever. Like we're gonna have a new SPI device. This is so cool. We could like do DMA and like life is so good. Um, we're connecting to our Arduino Zero. Upload the code. It's going to make us save it. We're saving it. OK, uploading. OK, and then open up. Oh, you know what? Because this is, hold on, I got to. This is off of my um, screen. There you go. Aha. OK. That's, hold on. How do 
I should be using 1.67. Okay, so, wait, why is, hold on, I'm going to use, I'm going to use 167. I think that 164 does not support zero. Actually, hold on, live demo. Nice little syntax highlighting. The Desk of Lady Ada is brought to you by you, the customer. <laughs> we don't have ads. We haven't taken any loans. No venture capital. A 100% lady engineer from MIT owned company. Your orders pay the bills here. I found my demos like not working. Okay, I'll figure out. I did, I did do quite a bit of messing around with some stuff earlier. Sheesh. What is up with my... What did I break? I broke something. Maybe talk about what your approach is to troubleshooting. Well, I'm, I can't even get the... Um, Serial begin to pop up. So let me just get that working. A little bit of delay here. Because it should be streaming the um, numbers as it transmits them. selected yeah I do okay that's embarrassing I didn't fix it though let me try one more time I'll, I'll try 165 that's so cool I totally broke my Arduino install Uh, well, I don't have time to reinstall it. Let me. So you can't you can't just re-download it. No, I mean, like I was I was uh, today I was messing around with the um, the uh, board package and I might have broken something. Let me let me see if I can. Um, Well, you know, I am getting, hold on, let me stick my scope cam. I don't know why serial broke, but one second. Okay, well, um, I'm sure I'm doing something silly, I just can't quite figure out why serial is broken. I'm on the programming port, but I'm just not seeing any serial output. It's cool. Um, maybe I, maybe I messed with the circums too much. Okay, but uh, let's, let's go back to this demo. Now that I've verified that it doesn't work correctly, or it does work correctly when it's supposed to work. Okay, so when you, um, Upload this code, um, the example code, to create uh, you know, your SPI device with CIRCOM1, your pins, your pads that you're going to use, 
and then you want to um, transmit data. Now let's go to, um, one second, uh, sorry, one second, trigger menu, auto. And there's nothing. And you're so sad. You're like, well, wait a minute. Like, you know, I'm supposed to be transmitting all this data, but there's, there's no data being transmitted. Um, what is up with that? Where is my SPI data? Have you been lying to me, Lady Ada? And, and the thing is actually, no, but there's one more thing that we have to do before we um, set up our CIRCOM. So let's go back to the computer. Okay, so you, you, know, you did everything you thought you were supposed to do. You, you, set, you, know, you passed in your CIRCOM object, you passed in pins 11, 12, 13, um, your pads, you set begin and you begin the transaction, you do the transfer, but nothing's actually transferring. So the reason why is the pins for in, in your variance file, pins uh, 11, 12, and 13, they're set by default to a certain functionality. And in this case, the functionality is timers. That's the default PINMUX functionality from that data sheet. So this is, uh, uh, for example, pin 13 is PA17. If you go down to PA17, which is over here, PA17 can um, be CIRCOM, it can be I squared C, it can be external interrupt, it can be a timer pin. And that's what the default is. It could, so basically it's set up so it can do GPIO or, or PWM out. And what you have to do is actually not only tell the CIRCOM which pads to use, but then tell those pads that the CIRCOM wants to use you as a pad. So you actually have to like go both ways. You tell the CIRCOM which pads to use, which pins to use and tell the pins um, to set yourselves up as uh, CIRCOM devices, uh, CIRCOM pins. Okay, so to do that, we have to, yes, we have to tell the Arduino core to change the MUX type because it, it doesn't actually do that automatically. And maybe in a future version it will, but um, it doesn't today. So what you have to do is after you begin, you tell the Arduino IDE that the pin peripheral, which is a really nice little function, um, Philby pointed out to me, because I was like, oh, it's gonna do it manually, but there's actually a function called pin peripheral. You give it the digital pin number, and then you tell it what you want it to be. So for example, you want it to be a CIRCOM pin. So you grab this, and then you put it here, and do it after begin, because begin does all sorts of things that you wanna, you wanna make sure that this gets done. And then you upload it. Oh. You have to include a wire, private, wiring private, which actually contains that function. Then you upload it. And if you go to scope cam, now we have serial. So that's what you need to do to get your SPI out. Hold on, let me get these both grounded. Where did this ground? Okay. So you can see you've got your eight megahertz clock up top. Not that square, but that's okay. Eight megahertz and I'm using kind of long wires. And then you can see the data is clocking in underneath there. So yeah, you definitely got like SPI data going out. So that's, that's pretty awesome. You can, you can see like it's running every, every few milliseconds. So that's how you create an SPI device. And the only thing to watch out for, oh, can go back to the computer cam, is if you're doing a different CIRCOM that um, uses an alt, for example, like let's say you wanted to use uh, CIRCOM 2. CIRCOM 2 has some of those pins, like CIRCOM 2.1 and 2.0. Those are on the alternative CIRCOM pads. So when you set the pin peripheral, you have to tell it CIRCOM alt. Otherwise it will, it'll default to whatever's in this. It'll act as like the CIRCOM 0.1, not the 2.1. So you just have to watch out for that. But pretty much as long as you 
you assign the um, the uh, the type the muxing afterwards. It works really great, and then you know you have your own uh, custom SPA device. So that's that's it. That's actually it's not so bad. Like you just have to look up in the table to see which pins and which mux and just and just get get all those little defines right. But once you do it, like you only have to do it once and. Even though the Arduino software could do it for you, it's it's. They, I think it's unexpected that people do it that often. And if they are, they're advanced enough that they can look up how to do it. Okay. And then um, I guess it's five nine forty five. How long will we be broadcasting? Keep it on for forty minutes. Okay. That's actually. I can. Yeah. I mean, there's also. Um, you can do serial. Oh wait. This is. Hold on. This is a typo. So you can also do serial. So um, serial is, is pretty easy. You can um, set it up to um, also, you, know, you have to just check the muxing. It's, um, you can only have the TX on one of two pads. You can have the ARCs on any pad, so it's a little bit like SPI. Um, basically make a serial object really easily to, um, to transmit data. And then if you want, you can also create a wired device. And so if you want I squared C, you can, um, I think like the Duet has wire and wire one, you can create your own wire one device, um, you know, with peripheral wire. And wire is, is the most constrained. You really have only two pads that you can use. I think it's only zero and one. You don't get to choose which, you don't have any pad choosingness. You're, you're pretty much fixed to, so the circom pad zero and circom pad one are the only ones you can use. But um, it's I squared C, and you know it has like has to deal with pull ups and like there's bi directional transmission. So I, I, I can understand that. Um, but other than that, it's the same thing. You set up the wire device. Uh, you um, do the pin mux, the pin peripheral, and you can pretty much make two or three wire devices. So this is really nice. What I'm using this for is if you have the um, like the Feather M0 with Wi-Fi, the, the main SPI port I wanted to dedicate to Wi-Fi and have another SPI port so that I could do um, LED drawing, you know, like take data from the, the um, Wi-Fi interface and draw it to LEDs. So having one Wi-Fi inter having one SPI interface dedicated to Wi-Fi and then having one SPI interface dedicated to the dot star LEDs, um, lets you do DMA on the dot stars, not worrying about interfering with the Wi-Fi. So it's, it can be pretty powerful. It's a little bit more advanced, but if you've ever had to bit bang SPI or, or use software serial, this isn't that much harder and you get basically a whole new device with all of the um, hardware support, interrupt support that you would expect from a you know, Arduino serial device. So kind of nice. Flexible, powerful. Right. And with that, is Desk of Lady Ada for this yeah. fine Sunday. So I'm going to, I have like a, two more paragraphs to write in this tutorial, and I'm going to figure out what I broke in my Arduino build. You see, I have like six versions of Arduino because I'm constantly yes. like messing, messing with them. And um, even if you're not interested in uh, uh, making your own circoms, check out the, um, I really do recommend reading through the variance file if you're interested in, in, in the Arduino internals because it's kind of neat to see how it's all the, the, um, the pipeline of data that goes underneath that makes all the, the connections route underneath the, uh, under, underneath the hood. So you get to use stuff like analog read A3, and it just works. It's kind of cool. Okay, and special thanks to Phil B, who's in the chat, and thanks for all your help with this. Phil B has um, been awesome. Uh, he pointed out pin peripheral. I was just like, ah, I'm going to have to do all sorts of like messy stuff. He's like, no, there is a thing, pin peripheral. And I was like, this is awesome. Um, and yeah, this is a, a part of a, a, a long journey towards uh, a project that we've been working on, which is um, basically the, the demo I had yesterday, which is the um, Wi-Fi like, Fade Candy like device that allows you to do uh, processing to LEDs um, over a Wi-Fi link and would not have been possible if it wasn't for circoms. All right. Well, tune in this week for more Just of Lady Ada. On Wednesday, we have Orbital Electronics with Becky Stern at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Mm. 
And then 7.30 p.m., we have show and tell on Wednesday. Yeah. 8 p.m., Ask an Engineer. Thursday, 3D Hangouts. And then throughout the week, we'll have a variety of videos and more, some Desk of Lady Ada and cool stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. we're going to be doing we're gonna be doing a little bit more hardware. I'm still, I'm wrapping up this tutorial, and I want to do a DMA tutorial. Um, so there's a little bit more just software stuff, but then we'll get back into some hardware fun. Mix and match. Okay. Okay. And that's your disc of Lady Ada. Bye, everybody.